Imagine exiling all your most valuable citizens, your greatest thinkers, writers, teachers, technicians and innovators. Find out what happened when everyone was ordered out on this episode of... In the last episode, we saw how the death of one of the greatest warriors, Ali Attar, opened the gates for the Christian forces to take the city, ushering in a religiously perverted and corrupt regime that would last until... Well, it hasn't really stopped. But back in 1486, Queen Isabel I was finally able to enter the city by this gate, still standing today known as Hauthi. After 774 years of Muslim rule, the defeated three and a half thousand citizens of Locha were exiled and were forced to make their way towards the city of Granada. But not for long. Six years was all they would have until that city itself fell to the mercenaries and the Catholic kings. But this was not the first mass exodus of people from the peninsula, and it would clearly not be the last. Over the next few hundred years, the Inquisition would eliminate anything and anyone capable of questioning the increasingly autocratic and fanatical status quo. Such precedents made it easy for personality defectives to find their way into positions of power. One person comes to mind that became the prime minister a record number of times during their political life. Someone remembered for their autocratic tendencies, their iron-fisted reign, their refusal to consider the needs of the great majority of working people. No, it's not Maggie Thatcher. It's Ramon Maria Nabaev, born in this very town in the year 1800. Join me, the Gaspacho Monk, episode 5, when we explore the roots of authoritarianism and the seeds of unrest in feudal space. <laughs> Say cheese.